Welcome back to another episode of Open at Microsoft. Today, we're going to be diving in deeper into a topic of Radius, a new cloud native application platform for developers and operators. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at how Radius works really well with Dapper, the distributed application runtime. All right, let's go ahead and kick things off. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at how Radius and Dapper work better together. It's almost, Ryan, like peanut butter and jelly. They're really yeah. good on their own, but like once you combine them together, you, like, you really get the best sandwich in the world or the best tech stack in the world. So let's go ahead first and talk a little bit about Dapper, the distributed application model. Uh, Ryan, could you tell us a little bit about Dapper and why it makes developing uh, cloud-native apps that much easier? Sure. So Dapper is a kind of a API framework or programming model for building microservices kinds of applications. So if you want to um, connect to a database or a state store, you want to do some messaging, maybe you have some distributed systems problems to solve, um, Dapper is a really helpful framework that you can use from any language or any cloud that you're deploying to. Um, and, and we think it goes great with Radius. Uh, if you're a developer who's on Dapper, uh, we hope you're really excited about the support in Radius for using it. Uh, do you want to show us a demo? Yeah, let's dive into a demo where I have a Dapper application ready to go here. Uh, here, it's a TypeScript app, mm -hmm. and I have imported the Dapper client from the Dapper library. And down here, uh, it's just a, uh, for our to-do application, mm -hmm. I've added the ability to go in and do things like list my to-do items, get my to-do items, and then go through all of that. So you can see me using the Dapper client to mm -hmm. read the items and then get and save those particular to-do items. So this is, a t this is a TypeScript application. We're using Dapper as a database. Is that how I can think about it? Exactly. Okay. So, so here in this app, you're not seeing anything about Azure resources or AWS databases, things like that. So all of this code is actually oh. like cloud and platform independent. Mm -hmm. So I can go in and swap out my state store components in Dapper to use something like a Redis cache or Azure storage or different types of technologies. Oh, awesome. That seems like it would be really useful with Radius because we could run it locally and then we could deploy to the cloud. Exactly. And that's where Radius really shines is uh, when it comes to like getting your Dapper application actually deployed and running up in the cloud, it can be challenging to deploy that infrastructure, get it configured just right, get the Dapper component created. And, and let's take a look at where Radius comes okay. in. Okay. Yeah. I want to see how we plug Dapper into Radius. Perfect. So let's go ahead and initialize Radius. I'm going to run the rad init command. This will make sure that uh, first we set up an application in our directory. It will install the Radius control plane. It's going to go ahead and create a new local development environment for us. Uh, now, you, now, you already had a Kubernetes cluster running here in this code space, right? Correct. So here okay. in this code space, I'm running just a lightweight uh, Kubernetes uh, environment, uh, K3S or K3D. And it just makes it super easy to get up and running in this local dev environment. OK. What will we do next? Yep. So now that we have Radius initialized, we can go ahead and open up a new file called app.bicep. And you'll see a couple things. First, we're using the BICEP language. And if you're not familiar with BICEP, it's an infrastructure as code declarative language to talk about the types of resources that I want to deploy. Now, on line number one here, we're actually importing Radius to be able to use all of these new Radius types that describe the application. So if we scroll down just a little bit, we'll take a look and we can see our container. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to be running just a demo container, which is almost like a Swiss Army knife that lets us mm -hmm. uh, do the to-do application and like learn a little bit more about our environment. And this is the same app that you showed us the code for. We just already published it. Correct. So yeah, okay. the, yeah, the code that we took a look at here in this TypeScript app is that same demo app that we've containerized, and it's available here uh, in our container registry. Now, the first thing that we're going to do to add Dapper is to add the Dapper sidecar. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the process that handles all of those uh, requests into Dapper. And with Radius, it's actually just as easy as adding the Dapper extension. So here, I'm going to be adding the Dapper sidecar extension, and then I'm going to be giving this the app ID of demo. And with a save, just like that, we now have Dapper added into our container. So I could think about this. I, if I don't know what a sidecar is uh, or why, why we're saying the word sidecar, I could think about this as like, I'm enabling Dapper for this container. Correct. Yep. So yep, for this container, we're enabling Dapper. And now this like process off on the side running Dapper will be ready to use by your container. 
Awesome. So now that we have the Dapper extension on the container, let's talk a little bit about those Dapper state stores, which yeah. is that uh, microservice building block for managing your uh, microservices state. And with Radius, it's just as easy as adding an, one more resource here in Bicep for applications.dapper slash state stores. And I'll choose my API version. And then I will choose the required properties. I'm going to name this state mm -hmm. store. I'm going to say that this state store belongs in my Radius environment, that mm -hmm. local dev one that we created a little bit ago. But it's a parameter, so we can customize that. And it's going to be part of my application, which again is uh, that parameter that's passed in. And that's it. Actually, okay. from the developer's point of view, I now have my demo container with a Dapper sidecar, and it has Dapper enabled. And I now have my mm. Dapper state store. Let's talk a little bit about how we make these communicate. With Radius, we want to make connections super simple. So with this, I'm just going to name a new connection called st state store. And then I'm going to give it the source of state store.id. And now we have everything we need to go ahead and run our application. OK, so the three things that I had to do is I had to add the sidecar that enables Dapper. Yep. I had to declare anything that I need inside Dapper, so state stores or pub subs or other Dapper features I'm using, I declare here. Yep. And then I say that I'm connected to those things, and Radius ensures that they get wired up. Exactly. OK. Perfect. Let's go ahead and deploy this into our local dev environment or run it. I'm going to go ahead and do rad run. I'm going to be running that app.bicep file. And let's be, then we're going to target our local dev mm -hmm. environment and workspace. And you can see that Radius goes to work building our application file. And now mm -hmm. our deployment is in progress. So what are some of the things that are happening while this is processing? Because you said that we're going to get a Dapper state store, but we didn't say anything about how that's configured. So what's, what's actually going on while this runs? Great question. So behind the scenes, we're leveraging a feature of Radius called Recipes. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, the developer who's talking about their application never has to know anything about the infrastructure, like what's actually running underneath the hood. Mm -hmm. Those are all going to be handled by the uh, like operations team mm -hmm. or uh, the, the person or, or team that has set up these mm -hmm. recipes. So actually, like taking a look at our local dev recipes mm -hmm. repo, Here's just an example of a Bicep template using Kubernetes resources to first model a Redis deployment. Mm. Uh, we're going to be modeling a service for our Redis deployment. And then here is our Dapper component. So yeah. we actually have the Dapper component being created and deployed into our Kubernetes cluster all automatically by our recipe. Now, if I don't understand this, can I still use it? <laughs> yes, yeah. And the, the nice part about local dev recipes is what we're seeing here. This is all like built in, baked mm -hmm. into Radius. So when you when I ran Red init, this just comes out of the box, kind of wheel mm -hmm. like batteries included for you to get up and running. So if you if you want to play around with Radius and try out your mm -hmm. first Dapper app, it's all ready to go for you. All right. Cool. Uh, looks like something happened over here. Yep. So here's that same demo app. We have our state store configured here. And we can also view a little bit more about some of the environment variables here, proving that it's running in Kubernetes. Can see some settings that got injected from Dapper there. Correct. Yep. So up here, we have uh, an environment variable that was injected automatically with our component name. And this, back in our code, is how we are able to communicate with our uh, Dapper client is through that name there. Gotcha. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the to-do list, and let's go ahead and say that uh, demo dapper plus radius. And that is a to-do item that we need to do. And I'd say, that, I'd uh, say that that worked. That worked. So let's go ahead and mark that as complete. Great. Um, but I have one more thing for you. OK, let's do one more thing. Yep. So he, back in the demo application, I'm actually going to exit out of this. And I'm going to deploy this into my uh, Azure environment. So instead of running it with local dev, let's say I have a production Azure environment. And this production Azure environment will have another recipe. But this time, instead of lightweight Kubernetes resources, it's going to be using Azure resources, such as an Azure storage oh, account. Oh, OK. So I could swap the technology that I'm using in between different environments where I'm running. Exactly. The, the application definition here, app.bicep, never changed at all. But all you have to do is just switch to a different environment and a different uh, target. And then now it's swapping out all that underlying infrastructure. And then we had Redis and 
dev and we had storage in production. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a difference that Dapper knows how to handle for me. So I just write my code for Dapper and then um, Dapper is going to translate to those different data stores. Exactly. And Perfect. that's all the power of the Dapper component because here we were looking at our local dev state store. But if we take a look at the Azure state store, we'll see our storage account, mm -hmm. and then we'll see also that same Dapper component, but this time using the uh, connection to that Azure storage. And Dapper takes care of all of that. Well, that's pretty cool. This seems really easy. Yep, and just and we can see that the website launched again. This time it's going to be running in Azure. We have that same connection, that mm -hmm. same information, and then I can go into my to-do list and go ahead and go from there. And that's it. We now have Dapper plus Radius working together, showing how you can make truly portable applications. That's awesome. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining. Yeah, that's, the, that's Dapper plus Radius. And we hope that you learned a little bit about how, just like peanut butter and jelly, great on their own, but absolutely amazing together. And we'll catch you next time on Open at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs>